Welcome, and thank you for taking the time to view this presentation. My name is Doug Morton, and I'll be highlighting the advanced steel topic today. Throughout the following presentation, we will be looking at how we can create and add cladding to the database. To begin with, we need to look at how the cladding element can be generated and saved. One of the first things we're going to need to do when creating our own custom cladding is to generate the shape that we want to use. Now, I've taken the liberty of drawing that here ahead of time. You can see it has to have a thickness. It can't simply be a line. So you have to create your shape with a thickness. And it has to be a completely enclosed polyline. So there are no gaps, nothing sticking out at the end. Everything is closed at the when it's all is said and done. Now what we're going to do is we're going to turn this into a user shape. So if you're not familiar with user shapes, this is on the extended modeling tab. And you're going to go down to user section, this area here, there's six buttons. We're going to need to put a frame around this. We're going to have to put this uh, shape onto the proper layer and I'll show you where that is. And we're going to have to add in what is the name of our catalog and what is the name of the shape itself. So our, our class basically is our catalog. We're going to come up here. And if you haven't already, click on one of these buttons. What that will do is it will create all of the layers that our elements are going to go on to, the hype layers. So for example, I'll take the first one because I need to add a frame. And as soon as I click on that, you're going to notice under layers, you're going to get all of these layers here, hype coordinates, hype exact, hype exact outer, hype frame, hype inner, and so on and so forth. All these hype layers get created. And it puts us onto the one that we've selected, which in this case is hype frame. I'm going to draw that frame around this object. Let me come back here. Uh, you have tools right underneath that if you want. Very simple, you know, it's just a rectangle, polyline, circle, and single line text. And I'm just going to draw with the rectangle a frame around this. Now, this can be adjusted afterwards. If it's not the right size, don't worry. We can come back and we can make it larger or smaller as needed. Now, in here, we're also going to need the name of the class. Now, the class name is like uh, when you're looking at your shapes here. Is it the W? Is it the uh, I-beam? Is it uh, not, not, not the general shape, not channel or W shape or angle, but the actual uh, shape itself. So if I put one in, okay. what you see in here, the AISC 15W, SMH, this is the catalog name, your class name. Okay. And we're going to have to define this for our new shape. So I'm going to come back to extended modeling and I'm going to change to section class. From here, again, the tool's right below it. I'm going to pick the single line text. And I'm just going to pick a point. Uh, the height, uh, it's fine, two and a half. Direction, this way. And I'm going to give it a name. And I'll call this uh, GR Cladding. I'll click outside of it and then hit Escape. Now my, have my, my name is here for my class. It will create a user shape database with this name. Inside of that database, what we need to do is put the name of this shape. What do we want to call it? And anything we add into this user shape database, this class, we're going to need to have unique names for each piece. So if we were doing more than one, we could use the same catalog here, the same class over and over again. Um, but we would need to have a unique name for the shapes that we create as we go along. And I'm just going to switch in the same place here under user section. I was doing class. I'm going to come down one and I'll do section name. So this section name here, I'll just come below that, enter that direction, and I'm going to call this panel one, just like that. Click outside and escape. So I now have my class name and my shape name. 
At this point, if you wanted to, you could go through, you could create your shape. So you could click on this and then draw your outer contour. If there's any hollow sections, and this is typically for like HSS or pipe, if you have a hollow section, uh, you can create the inner contour. And these are your general shape. You then have the exact outer contour and exact inner contour. So for example, if you wanted to create it with straight lines and then come back and show all the curves and bends um, of the shape, you could do the standard shape and then the exact shape. In this case here, I'm just drawing the one. I don't need to switch to the layer because it's already created. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select what I created and I will manually place it onto that layer. Okay, so there's that shape. I'm going to change it from the standard layer. I'm going to come up to those hype layers that we looked at. And I'm just going to say hype outer section. That's it. You'll notice they have above that the hype exact outer section. So if you were doing that, then you could put it to hype outer section exact outer section but start with the outer section here this is your straight line one the easy one and then you have that in place in this case that's all we need i have my shape i have my cl uh, class i have my name for my shape i have my frame that goes around everything everything has to be inside that frame now we have the ability to come in and put uh, reference points but for the panel, we're not going to do that. For this cladding, we're just going to leave that off. We're not going to put any. It'll we'll let the software look at the shape, calculate uh, the center, and determine how it should get placed there. You can also add coordinates normally with user shapes. We don't need that here. We're just simply going to come straight to generate all sections, or if we had more than one, we're just adding a new one. We could generate that selected section. And when you click on it, it'll tell you if it passes or fails. You'll see there's your section type, section name, and successfully create. Save the file. You can back this up somewhere so that way you don't have to create it again. If you ever lose it, you have it. Just come back next time and generate the section and you're done. And that's creating the cladding shape. Now that the shape has been generated, we need to take the information related to this shape and add it to the cladding specific databases in order for it to be available in the cladding tool. To modify the database, we're going to start off by going to the management tools. And from in here, we're going to select the table editor. And we're going to need to load the default databases. So top left, you'll see open installed databases. From in here, we're going to begin by going to the profile master table. And so if you type profile master or begin to type it, you'll see it narrows down the list of different tables and we're left with just the one that we need. And to come to type name text. I'll click on the header to sort everything in that column. And then I'll scroll down to where it says USR. And I'm going to look for that shape or that uh, class that I just added. Under type name text, you'll see user gr cladding And I'm going to select that. And I'll copy it. From here, I'm going to come in. I'm going to open up Notepad. I'm just going to paste it there for now, make it easier for me to find afterwards. Once I have that name put aside, I'm going to type cladding. Under cladding, I'm going to start off by going to, um, you can see here I have my profiles. I'm going to go under Aster Rules. I'm going to find the Cladding profile info and cladding profile classes. So with the profile classes, I'll start here. You'll notice they have the class name and I'm gonna to scroll to the bottom and I'm just gonna pick in that column right there. I'm gonna paste that name here as well, user gr cladding. 
Now you can put a note here if you want, it's not required. And once you click outside that box, you'll see it adds a new line. That means this one's been saved. Now that we have that in place, I'm gonna come back to my Aster Profiles, User GR Cladding. So when I type cladding, this was also available to me. And what I want in here is I want my standard name. And I'm just gonna to come to where it says standard name. I'm gonna take the name of that panel that I created. And again, I'm gonna drop it into my notepad. From here, I need to add this into cladding profile info. You'll see they have a bunch in here already. And it's right under the classes where we went to classes before. We added this in the table right underneath profiles info. I'm going to do the same thing again. I'm going to come down to the bottom. But in here, what I need to do once I get into here is I need to kind of uh, copy this in between part. So they've got the same thing here. They've got their class name and they've got their shape name. And in between, they've separated it with a pound symbol, ampersand, uh, that double S symbol, ampersand pound, which we'll see. I'll copy that. And I'm going to do the same thing with mine. So I'm going to take my, there's my USR GR cladding. I'm going to put that symbol in between, no spaces, and then the panel name for that cladding. And I'm going to copy that, and I'm going to make a new line here. Now, typically, uh, the user-defined elements, you can put them in at about 22,000. A lot of things get created by that number automatically. You'll notice in this list here, if I come down, it goes from 20,000 to 30,000. So you have plenty of room. Uh, start at the 22,000 mark, or you can go above those numbers, but you want to have a, a unique ID key, one that's not going to be overwritten if they add more items to the database. So here I'm going to put 22,000. And I'm just going to put into here that information that I copied. So I copied the class. I copied the shape name from the standard name. And then I put these symbols in between, all one continuous word with no spaces between the symbols and each of the different names. Copy that and place it right here. The next thing you're going to need is you're going to need to know what is the working width and the step width. Now, if you're not sure of that, you can always open up your uh, shape again, and you can measure it from there. Okay. So if I go to uh, open here, I will grab my cladding shape, and I can measure from end to end. And I can also come in and figure out the step width by measuring from, and I'll just do a distance here, this point to this point and you can see that's seven inches now we're going to need to enter this in millimeters so you're going to take a tool to convert your met imperial to metric if you're doing it in metric you're all set all right so with that said i'll just come back to the database um, the step width is seven inches and the seven inches is going to be 177.8 so that's from peak to peak, basically, of the panel. Now, the overall length, what I want to do in here is I want to go not right from outside to outside. I want this piece to come down and overlap on the other side, inside. So what I need to do is I need to subtract the width of both of these. Now, these two items, uh, the thickness is the same all the way through, so it, it, it is one-eighth of an inch twice, so that's two eighths of an inch or one quarter. And one quarter in millimeters is 6.325, sorry, 6.35 rather. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna find what is the total length and I'm gonna subtract 6.35. Well, again, I can measure what is the total length here and then do the conversion. But I also have the option of just taking it from the database. If I go back to my profile under USR cladding, I can see the profile width is right here, 1768.475. Okay. 
So I could use that right away, and it'll go end to end my plotting. 1768.475. But I'm going to minus or subtract my thicknesses at each end, so 6.35. So that way, the overall width is what it should be minus the thickness at each end, so that way it'll come in and overlap. Right. So here's my 0.635, and that will equal 1762.125. Uh, and that's what I'm going to type in under profile info. So you cladding profile info. I'll just come back down. I can see my line number or key number 22,000. There's my GR cladding. I've already put in the step width, but I need to put in now this value. 1762.125. Okay. Now, if I wanted them to come flush end to end, I would just use the value that I found in that uh, USR GR cladding database in, uh, in the, inside that table. Um, but like I said, I want to overlap a bit, so I subtracted the thicknesses. And I'm done. It's now placed it in with the profile classes, it's going to show up. And with the profile info here, it's going to get place it in properly. And it's going to give me that overlap that I need. So now that I've done this, I can click out of that field that I was typing in last. So that way it accepts it and then close the database. From my ribbon, because I'm not closing the program and reopening it, I can close this shape here. From the ribbon, I can come up and I can reload or update the defaults. It reloads the latest data from the databases. So it'll read that information we just typed in back into here. And now I'm going to go back to where I have my tool. So it's going to be my cladding tool. I've already got defined the cladding area. This is, if I look at it, it's not a polyline. It's actually a ASTX profile or contour rather. And I'm going to put my cladding onto that area. I'll select that, right click, and my section properties. If I look in here now, you can come down. You'll see there's my GR cladding. It's changed to that. If I zoom in, you can see it. And it's on panel one. I can add additional panels into here if I want to. Now, if I look at it from the front, you're going to notice that because I subtracted that amount, the two panels overlap one another. So I'm getting my panel come in. They're lining up and they're overlapping as needed. And that's how you come in and place new panels in. You can generate your shape, save them to the uh, database, go in, modify your databases grab the information required for the class and for the shape, add them to the cladding uh, info, and then they should be available in your dialog for placement and you can use them. I hope the presentation has been helpful. Thank you for taking the time to watch and have a great day.